TV18. This is TV18, and you're watching CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to Eye on India. I'm Shireen Bhan. In a bid to crack down on large corporate defaulters, the Reserve Bank issued an ordinance in May this year amending the Banking Regulation Act to give more teeth to the central bank to resolve the issue of non-performing assets. An independent advisory committee commissioned by the Reserve Bank of India has decided now to refer 12 companies to the insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings. These 12 companies account for over 25% of the gross non-performing assets in the Indian banking system. Now, the the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code was introduced in 2016 and that sanctions the reorganization and insolvency resolution of corporate persons, partnership firms and individuals. It has specific provisions for the insolvency procedure which may even lead to resolution or liquidation. Now, As we prepare to implement the code, it is important to focus on its impact on the larger ecosystem and its impact on the companies that are headed possibly towards liquidation. To analyze the challenges and the resolution process as we roll out the bankruptcy proceedings, we have with us a very special panel here. On the program, Shardul Shoff, Executive Chairman of Shardul Amarjand, Mangaldas and Company, Sunil Srivastava, Deputy Managing Director of Corporate Accounts Group at State Bank of India, Nitin Jain, the CEO of Global Asset and Wealth Management at Edelweiss Financial Services, and Abhizar Divanji, Partner and National Leader, Financial Services at EY India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Shardul Shoff, let me start by asking you. The Reserve Bank, by way of that ordinance, amended the Banking Regulation Act thereby giving more teeth to this entire process of being able to deal with NPAs. How hopeful do you now feel about the fact that we will possibly see some sort of closure on this matter? I'm quite sure there will be closure for the simple reason that the choice which was there with the banks mm. of not to file has effectively been taken away. When the Reserve Bank of issue issues a directive or whether by press note or otherwise to a bank that you should file or you shall file uh, then the choice of not doing so is no longer available mm. because they're subject to directions of the Reserve Bank as the central regulator. And therefore, sitting on the fence is no longer an option. Mm. You have to bring it into the, the anvil of the uh, National Company Law Tribunal and they, they will take up the proceeding and mm. bring it to a logical end. Okay. So, so Abhishek, I, I want to pick up on that because Shardul Shroff here is saying that the choice no longer with banks not to move towards the NCLT and this fence-sitting business that we've gotten used to is perhaps going to end. I remember you spoke to us when the uh, amendment had been passed and you said that earlier banks couldn't invoke the insolvency in banking code due to the fear, fear of being questioned and that no longer is the case. So do you believe that we are possibly now going to see further movement on this front? We certainly have seen movement because everybody has selected advisors everybody's in the process of filing so we will see that movement I think I'd go a step further mm. and say that we will actually see some action within 180 stroke 270 days mm. and that's more imperative because the bankruptcy code itself says you either have a resolution plan or you go in for liquidation yeah so now and time bound resolution absolutely now there is a consequence yeah now there's a consequence for inaction. Mm. That's the important thing. Yeah. There is a consequence for inaction. Sunil Srivastava at State Bank of India, uh, you know, this is going to be something that, uh, that you're looking at very, very closely. Two questions. Let me start by asking you about the implications as far as banks are concerned. One, from a provisioning point of view, and secondly, from a capital point of view, sir. See, the provisioning has already been, for these 12 cases, has already been uh, decided by the Reserve Bank of India. And most of the banks are perhaps adequately provided for it. So, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue for these 12 accounts, which have been in NPA for the last two years or so. Hmm. But do you, do you foresee legal impediments? Do you foresee legal challenges? Yeah, of course, the, the NCLT Act, the, the code, is of a recent origin. So definitely there would be challenges, as we have seen uh, uh, in, in a few cases. But uh, will those challenges, obviously, as, as bankers, and we have appointed uh, resolution professionals backed by competent uh, consulting companies, uh, I am sure that we have a strong case and we will pursue it to its logical conclusion. 
Mm. You believe that you'll be able to persuade them to the logical conclusion, but Shardul Shroff, let me ask you about the legal implications and the legal challenges, because even, for instance, in the ICICI bank matter uh, versus inventive industries, uh, we did see uh, the borrower in this case actually resorting to some sort of uh, legal challenge. Do you foresee that being a big impediment as we move forward? I think, uh, Shirin, there's bound to be legal process before the whole thing settles. If you take the previous surface law, mm. it was challenged in Mardia Chemicals. So all new law which deprives promoters of their property or which has an impediment in terms of recovery, there will be some form of challenge, which mm. may be legitimate, which may be stupid, but people will challenge it because nobody wants to really complete a process in 180 days. Mm. It's too much for a promoter to believe that his asset which he has built over years is gone in just 180 days because if he can't come up with a proper resolution plan. Mm. So there will be an amount of uh, litigation process in the beginning, but I feel that the matters will shift to the Supreme Court very fast mm. and that's the only court which can decide it with finality. So. It, I would welcome litigation because then it brings you the welcome, finality. You would welcome litigation. I don't know if the others on the panel would agree with that. Mr. Srivastava, would you agree with Chardul Shrav? Would you welcome litigation? You know, I would not welcome litigation because we probably delay things. But yes, definitely it's a new act and precedences have to be created for subsequent uh, uh, filings to be expedited. So to that extent, yes, these are, these are going to be creating precedences and then you won't have such things coming up in the future cases. What I, meant was just yeah. 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 Sure. what I mean is that the finality can only come with a Supreme Court mm. decision. Others you'll be stretched to 26, 27 high courts, each one taking a view, it's many national companies or tribunals yeah. taking a view. Yeah. So the sooner there is finality from the Supreme Court, that's much better to the process because people a, will discount uncertainty. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right on that front. But Nitin Jain, let me ask you and let me bring in the ARC perspective because the Reserve Bank in that uh, ordinance uh, or directive had said that the proper exercise of the enhanced empowerment would require the coordination and the cooperation of several stakeholders including banks, ARCs, rating agencies and private equity firms. What is the kind of role that you envisage for somebody like yourself? <clears throat> so actually, uh, we are in a, as Edelweiss, in an interesting situation where we have an ARC, we have an NBFC, uh, and we have some funds through which we can invest in equity. And I think uh, that puts us in a good position because we can provide a lot of flexible solutions uh, to companies because a lot of these companies struggle with all kind of capital structures, including uh, equity, preferential debt, priority debt, sometimes working capital needs. So the fact that you have different vehicles allows us to uh, provide all kind of interesting solutions. But I think broadly speaking, the way we classify these companies is good quality assets, asset, bad quality asset, and good quality management, bad quality management. And our focus is generally a lot more on the assets which are uh, economically viable assets not necessarily uh, in a good position because of balance sheet issues and I would rather prefer to go with management quality management which has demonstrated ability to run these assets and uh, our solutions mostly are to provide uh, capital uh, structures which are more amenable to the uh, cash flows uh, of the companies work with the banks uh, help them restructure assets buy out debt from them and in certain cases where we think the asset is very valuable but the management is not competent enough to run with the asset we also provide significant oversight by bringing in our operating partners into the companies so i think it it's a it's a complete package that we try and bring in into a lot of these companies mm. so given the parameters that you've just uh, listed out for us anything looks interesting for you uh, we are looking at a couple of cases in the NCLT. I don't want to name those assets, but there will be reasonable competition amongst different private equity investors, people like us, and some strategic as well. And I think we, uh, we have to see how the situation uh, f unfolds. But I think there are at least two or three assets which we are very keen, which are reasonably large assets, and I think we can provide an interesting solution to those assets. Okay, so uh, Nitin here, looking at assets, two or three he finds exciting and interesting at this point in time. Mm -hmm. What's the sense that, uh, that the two of you get in terms of where the buyers are? Let me ask you, Shardul Shroff. I think it's a tough market. 
to find buyers in this market when there is so much uncertainty globally it's going to be a difficult proposition mm. i don't think it's going to be that easy and the discounts may be steep because unless and until so that makes mr shivastav's job even harder, harder. because unless and until we have a proper structure of giving due diligence mm. no fund is going to put out money because they have very strict norms in terms of you know scrutiny mm. so some of those issues will become very critical in this new batch of 12 where the action will have to start urgently in terms of you know the process of creating an information memorandum mm. the process of going down an auction route the process of preparing a resolution plan those kind of things are going to see a lot of movement and if the quality of that work is done at a high level then mm. there will be bias mm. but if the quality is inadequate then you will see more discounts rather than uh, you know sacrifices yeah a bit slightly differing view yeah i'll tell you what can we say this 180 day period this is something which is starting today mm. lot of these assets the the likes of nitin jain or the likes of shri shivastav have been showing people that's happening much before the mm. ibc ever came yeah. in so there is a level of due diligence that's been ongoing, ongoing. for a period yes. of time yeah. so the first 12 effectively there has already been an ongoing work in progress mm. which is going to result or culminate mm. in a transaction and that's one secondly uh, are there buyers for these assets i think there are mm. they may not be strategics mm. because of the global issues but there'll be enough capital mm. to be put behind structuring good businesses mm. so you know so for example when you talk about npas not yeah. all of them are redundant assets yeah because when you talk about npa it's effectively non performing assets in normally in terms mm. anyway if the assets mm. they have to be performing mm. they not performing because of the leverage mm. and there are enough correctors available for the leverage mm. in the market so the so likes of nitin jain are effectively correctors of leverage is what i mean so believe. the repair of the balance sheet you believe will certainly will happen, happen. Uh, mr shrivastav just on this point of the discounts uh, that shardul shroff was talking about because that is going to make the job of bankers harder even though you now have oversight committees and so on and so forth but you know the the fact that how much of a haircut who approves the haircut i mean those are going to be questions that you are going to have to deal with yeah see in fact uh, a couple of points one these are operating companies and uh, this is a question of their capital structure being actually real and that would require some infusion of capital which the existing promoters do not have and uh, the fact also remains that they cater to uh, some un unmet demand in the country so there could be uh, considerable interest so i'd be surprised if i didn't get interest for some of these operating assets on the question of what would be you know the haircut set you've, already, you've already got you've already got interested parties the, uh, sir uh, we have seen some interest we are getting some interest definitely and as as things stabilize probably in the next uh, the next few cases we'll probably get more interest as soon as the system stabilizes and the question of the haircut uh, definitely the process is to be run through the uh, through the resolution professional who will get uh, proposals which will be evaluated and put up to the committee of creditors who will have to vote 75% to get through so uh, this will be court court led and therefore the any haircut would also have the benefit of uh, having at the wisdom of the court behind it hmm so just on that point that uh, and i'll come back to the process in just a second but i wanted to pick uh, pick up on the point that you made that you've already seen interest coming in uh, is is this a mix of domestic investors global funds uh, can you give us some color on the kind of interest that's been evinced sir see until the resolution proposal that received by the resolution professional in the in the uh, bankruptcy court I, i think it would be premature to but yes people are inquiring about these assets and we expect some interest going forward okay yes abhi sir so, so i'll just add this to you what's happened always is over the before the ibc process formally came in mm. there were enough investors which actually came and inquired about us as mm. wanting to buy the assets mm. the issue was whether the pricing was right yeah. and was there enough information available mm. I think what the IBC process does one is it tends to get the pricing more realistic okay and secondly it makes information available in the domain so that people can take some action in a more informative way okay so it's bridging the deficit the there yeah. as far as the information yeah. asymmetry is concerned on that note we are going to take a break but when we return we continue our conversation here on uh, i on india on what the new bankruptcy proceedings could mean for corporate india stay with us
Salasat Techno Engineering Limited launches its IPO on the NSE and BSE with an issue price of 108 rupees per share. The IPO opens on July 12, 2017 and closes on July 17, 2017. The IPO is led and managed by Sarthi Capital Advisors Private Limited. Hasbro. This week, top six teams from the steel city of India spar to prove their mettle. of Oscars. Is that your final answer? Plus hundred. Catch Tata Crucible, the Campus Quiz 2017, Jump Shedpur Finals. At these times, only on CNBC TV 18. Presented by Tata. Leadership with trust. Galaxy S8 with infinity display. Less to hold and infinitely more to see. This week we focus on the theme India's best companies exploring treasury strategies with some of India's top CFOs. Watch India on the move the 21st century agenda at these times on CNBC TV 18. Presented by Standard Chartered Bank. What's hot and what's not? Buy in or sell out? We keep track of all the market movements so you cut to the chase and make the right call. Post your queries on moneycontrol.com or SMS 51818. Our experts will help you customize your stock portfolio and plan your investment strategies. Your stocks at these times. Only on CNBC TV 18. GST goods and service tax के रूप में जाना जाता है, लेकिन हकीकत में ये good and simple tax है. This is a very crucial economic reform, not just an ambitious tax reform. From the making of GST to its midnight birth, CNBC TV 18 took the lead in 360 degree coverage excellence. This is a very very fast-breaking change that is going to happen. With inter-platform dialogue with India's biggest tax experts. Let's fasten our seat belts. Good and simple tax, but not as simple as we all expected. This is, in fact, an achievement like no other in the economic history of our nation. Let's not judge it today or next week or next month. Immersive ground reporting and in-depth analysis. CNBC TV 18 is proud to be telling the GST story first across multiple platforms. CNBC TV 18. Stay ahead with the leader. Accounting partner, Zoho Books, GST ready accounting software. Welcome back. You're watching our special show, Eye on India, and we're discussing the implications of the new bankruptcy proceedings on corporate India. Shalto Shop, you know, let's talk about the infrastructure challenge as well. We talked about the legal impediments, but how prepared is the system for the deluge of cases that are, it's probably going to have to deal with? Frankly, I don't see the deluge yet, mm. and the system has coped so far, in the sense that the, 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 the proceedings are moving pretty quickly. There are no long delays in relation to hearings of matters. So there is today adequate response to the filings. Yes, if, if the matters move up to say 500 filings, 600 filings, then there will be a deluge and you will have to have many more tribunals look mm. at these issues. But so far, I think the process has been managed quite well. Okay, so far, so good. But do you foresee this as being a challenge, the infrastructure impediment at all? Uh, so far, so good. In future, I think we will be. Because we're talking about 12 cases now. And yeah. We have so many of them. We're going to have to Yeah, the second more and the third the list, according to the so, government, is already so clearly, been prepared. Clearly, there needs yeah. to be an expansion, especially, especially given that there is a tight time frame and the essence of the law is to clear it within the right time. Mm. Otherwise, frankly, India has enough uh, long-dated cases to go on for years. Mm. Yeah. So in that case, that's, but in this particular case, because essence is, uh, time mm, is of essence, essence, I think it's, it's important. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mr. Srivastav, and this is a question that a lot of people have asked us here on CNBC TV 18, that look, over the last decade, you've had several schemes. You've had the CDR, you've had the SDR, you've had the sustainable structuring of stressed assets, the S4A, but none of them have actually been successful. So why should we believe that this is going to be any different? One, uh, you see, each, each uh, of these S4A or SDR or CDRs uh, had uh, actually required a lot of collaboration amongst all the stakeholders. But uh, given that the fact that this is now going to have the force of the law behind it, 
perhaps bankers would be encouraged to make use of the system and it's more fair and more transparent to everybody. So there, it, uh, in the CDR or the SDR, it was the JLF which was deciding and taking a decision on the haircuts. Here perhaps the bankers would be encouraged to take the matter to the NCLT where it will be decided in a transparent manner by a committee of creditors and approved by the NCLT bench as to what is a, a sustainable level of debt that uh, can be carried and who should be actually carrying this debt going forward. So that transparency and that... Uh, so that's the positive. Would, uh, is, is that stamp of... That's the positive, yes. Uh, so that's the positive because you get the cover of law, so to speak. But what would you see as the big challenges going forward? See, the big challenge going forward definitely would be that one, uh, we have varying provisions and varying time norms for, you know, uh, in various schemes that we have. So I guess going forward, there would be a sunset for all these forbearances and everything would be referred to the NCLT, by which time perhaps uh, the NCLT institution would be, you know, on a more firm footing, so to say. So yes, during this period, while the institution is being set up, where the act is being tested, precedences are being created, we have to be patient. But I am sure this is the way forward as it has seen, been seen in most of the, company, the countries, where you have a very definitive okay. uh, bankruptcy it. laws. We had several, uh, but they sure. were too disaggregated and uh, were being referenced to various yeah. courts. So here at least we have one, one act which uh, takes care of all these things. But these will be refined as we go along. It's not the finality. In fact, in the US also, the, perhaps the bankruptcy act started in 18 or 1800s and first, uh, it's still going a process of revision. So I would, um, I'm sure Shardul will be able to throw a better light on this, on the legal aspects. Yeah, yeah. But yes, in, in, fact, that, uh, in fact, I'll get forward, Shardul to, 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 to comment the, on that. The, the refinement that's required. Uh, Nitin, you know, just to take that point forward and then, then I'll get Mr. Shroff to respond as well. Uh, in your experience, Nan, you were talking about some of the turnaround stories that you've been working with. Balarpur was one example that you shared with us on the show. What kind of refinements would you now like to see from here on as this process plays out? See, uh, first of all, let me just make a small comment on what we just discussed a couple of minutes back. I think uh, to say that Surfacey and the other uh, previous initiatives on bankruptcy have not been successful, I think might be slightly unfair. Uh, they are definitely not as successful as we would have liked them to be, but I think we have moved a long distance over the last 15, 20 years. Today, I think the entire credit infrastructure has improved dramatically vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, the late 90s and the early 2000s. And I think Surfacey has played a reasonably important role in the process. And I think uh, this entire bankruptcy code, if you ask me, is probably one of the most thoughtful and one of the most comprehensive laws that at least I have come across in the entire, uh, in the entire bankruptcy space, not only in India, but globally. It's, it's something that I, I think we have to give a lot of credit to people who have been instrumental in defining this law. Of course, it has to take its own sweet time to mature, and I, I would be surprised if things stabilize in less than two, three years. But what else could you have asked for? If you ask me today, when you talk to promoters, when you talk to bondholders, I think uh, most of them are reasonably confident that it's a, re it's a fair process, it's a time-bound process, and one big thing that it allows us to participate in these processes is the fact that people are forced to take decisions together. I think somewhere we were talking about it, why would interest come in? One of the biggest challenges that we have faced in, uh, in the process earlier was that there were 18 to 20 banks and I think everybody had a different agenda and different objectives to achieve. And to buy out debt from everybody was such a big task. It took us two, two, three, three years for us to get to a place where we could mm. drive decision making. Today, within the first three months, you are practically in a position where you are clear that whether all the lenders are yeah. together on a particular issue or not. And if they are, I think that provides a lot of clarity to potential investors like us. You're, you're absolutely right uh, on that front. Uh, we've got uh, just enough time for wrap-up comments. So let me uh, start by asking you, Shardul Shroff, uh, how does this change the landscape and what do you see as the result of all of this action that we've seen over the next, say, 12 months? I think in terms of financial discipline and as a law, this is an extremely good law. There will always, as I said, be people who want to challenge it because they want to 
subvert the process. But that's a part of mm. any democracy. Mm. So I think in the long run, this is a very good law. It will turn around assets. It will get better management into position. And there will be a streamlining. There may be a need of capitalization in the banks. banks but yeah. all that is for the good rather mm. than having a dead asset which doesn't function. Mm. This will at least bring in new capital and people who are new managers. Mm -hmm. Abhi, sir. So you finally think about reviving rather than just providing. So this law actually enables more capital, as Shardul just said. Yeah. The other important thing is we'll see a dilution of promoter shareholdings mm. going forward. Mm. So in India, which saw 100% promoter shareholdings yeah. come down to 75%, will come down to 30 and 40%. Mm. So promoters will need to learn to run companies with 40% mm. and hence with more governance. I think that's what I see. Learn to run them better. Uh, Mr. Srivastava, I'll give you the banker the final say on the program, sir. I would be feeling very encouraged because it will set in place systems which will enforce credit discipline amongst borrowers who will then be enjoined to adhere to certain norms for repayment of debt and servicing of interest and avoiding the situation of getting into financial distress. So that perhaps be leading to more prudential management uh, with, with uh, more professionalism and maybe as uh, Abhizar mentioned. Uh, with the promoters diluting their stake uh, further and getting more transparency in, more corporate governance perhaps. Well, uh, gentlemen, we hope that that is certainly the order of the day, prudence, professionalism and better governance. And we hope that this law will ensure not just that, but will ensure that the 10 lakh crore rupee burden on the Indian economy by way of NPAs starts now to be resolved. But thank you very much for joining us here on this CNBC TV 18 special. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you again. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching. Presented by EY, building a better working world. Superman! Ready? So you have to say that this is EY. No overload, no short circuit, no tension. EY wires, jodi dilo ke tar. Do you ask your daughters to stay indoors after dark? Do you ask them to refrain from wearing short skirts? Then you're only shielding them from the problem, not solving it. Sensitizing our children from the start to respect men and women equally will bring in a new tomorrow where our women do 